In today's video, we are going to discuss about pyometra as a continuation of a series infections of individual pelvic organs. In this video, we will be dealing with the definition, causes, pathology, clinical features, diagnosis and the treatment for pyometra. What is pyometra? The collection of pus in the uterine cavity is pyometra. You can see the uterine cavity filled up with pus. Prerequisites. Prerequisites are nothing but the conditions which have to be present priorly for the pyometra to occur. So if this is the uterus and the cervix and continuation as the vagina, we should have a obstruction or occlusion in the cervical canal. Any obstruction or occlusion in the cervical canal is a first prerequisite. Second thing, enough sources of the pus formation inside the uterine cavity. We should have the sources inside the uterine cavity to produce the pus. And there should be a presence of low-grade infection in the uterine cavity. Causes obstetrical the only condition in which the pyometra is observed is lochiometra. Lochiometra is nothing but the accumulation of the lochia inside the uterine cavity, which is causing to the abnormal distension of the uterus. You can see the uh, uterus being distended here. So this is a condition in which pyometra is observed. The other causes, the gynecological conditions in which pyometra is observed, the associated in which pyometra is associated is carcinoma in the lower part of the body of the uterus and also the endocervical carcinoma like how you can observe in the picture. So in this condition, in association to this, we have the pyometra that is nothing but accumulation of pus in the uterine cavity. Moving on, the senile endometritis. Senile endometritis is also known as the atrophic endometritis. Following the withdrawal of the estrogen, the uterus and the cervix and the vagina will lose the defense. As a result, the infection takes a greater withhold in the uterus. It is more likely to occur and hence we have pyometra more prominent in the postmenopausal women. Infected hematometra following the amputation, conization or deep cauterization of the cervix. So you can see the deep conization and the cauterization. This area, a cone shaped area being removed and following this operations we can have the infected hematometra also resulting in the pyometra. Tubercular endometritis, the genital TB in which the uterus is affected, association to it we have the pyometra. What is the pathology? How does this pyometra occur? There is abundant secretion of pus from the offending site and once this pus is being accumulated, there is blockage, occlusion in the cervical canal. So, the what happens? This accumulated pus will descend up into the uterine cavity. The cervical canal gets blocked due to senile narrowing. That is as the age, old age occurs, there will be narrowing. And it narrowing can also occur by scarring or fibrosis and also due to the debris. This accumulated pus is ascending upwards. First, the pus is uh, secreted by the offending site. Occlusion is there, so it is ascending upwards. The postmenopausal atrophic myometrium fails to expel the collected pus. Once the woman is in the postmenopausal period, there will be no periodic shedding of the endometrium. As a result, the collected pus cannot be expelled out. Thus, the uterus will go on enlarging more and more and there will be thinning of the wall of the uterus. The lining epithelium is lost at places and it is replaced by granulation tissue. So guys, if this is the uterus, and enough pus is accumulated the walls as the pus is increasing the walls are thinning 
and the offending sites are replaced by the granulation tissue the epithelium being replaced by the granulation tissue the organisms which are responsible for the formation of pyometra are coliforms streptococci staphylococci rarely it may be tubercular except in the tubercular where there is caseous uh, secretions the other conditions the fluid is thin offensive at times it is purulent or blood stain moving on to the clinical features the patient comes up to the clinic with a complaints of intermittent blood stain purulent offensive discharge per vagina and there will be occasional pain in the lower abdomen the systemic manifestations like body ache headache fever vomiting will be absent so guys you can see the clinical feature we have blood stained purulent offensive discharge which is intermittent and abdominal pain per abdomen you can observe the suprapubic swelling which can be felt of a varying size the swelling is cystic and it has a well defined margin and the lower pole of the uterus is not felt the swelling is tender so you can see the swelling suprapubic swelling we have a definite margins it is tender to touch then internal examination will reveal the swelling is uterine in origin so when you do the internal examination you can make out that the uterine cavity is being distended here there is swelling in the uterine or uh, cavity the offensive discharge is seen escaping out through the cervix since the pus has been accumulated on examination you can see the pus escaping out of the cervical os Pelvic ultrasonography will reveal the distended uterine cavity and accumulation of the fluid within the cavity. How do you diagnose pyometra? The diagnosis can be confirmed by dilatation of the cervix. Once the cervix is dilated, as you saw that the mucopurulent blood stained offensive intermittent discharge can be seen escaping out through the cervical os. in every case all type of investigations are to be maintained uh, it is done to exclude the malignancy of the uterus and endocervix you perform the other investigations so that you can rule out the malignancy diagnostic curative should be withheld for about 7 to 14 days following dilatation and drainage of pus first perform the dilatation and then drain the pus once the pus is drained follow the diagnostic curettage in diagnostic curettage you can see here what they are doing they are dilating the cervix and once the cervix is dilated the curettage is performed so that the unwanted abnormal tissues has been removed with the help of this we can minimize the complications like the perforation of the uterus or spreading peritonitis during this interval period the antibiotic should be given since you're performing it for about 7 to 2 14 days there is a period of 7 to 14 days gap between dilatation and drainage of pus and the dilatation and curettage during the 7 to 14 days period prescribe antibodies treatment once the malignancy is excluded so performing this curettage you ruled out if it is a malignancy or not once the malignancy is excluded and you have known concluded that pyometra is the cause you have to drain it by the simple dilatation of the cervix even in a non malignant case or in the cases where there is a recurrence of the pyometra since it is more commonly observed in the post menopausal women hysterectomy can be indicated hysterectomy is a surgical procedure in which there is an removal of the uterus definitive surgery for the malignancy is done following the treatment of pyometra thank you With this, we come to an end of pyometra. If you have any doubts, put it in the comment section. And if you like my video, hit the like button and subscribe.